welcome to the Improv Summit. I've got my bright light all over my shirt. I'm going to call it out now so no one else does. So in the comments, I don't want to hear anything because I've already said it. And as always, I'm your host, Spencer. And with me today, I have a very special guest. And I've always been saying a very special guest. And one day I was told that if I always say everyone's a very special guest, then no one's a very special guest. So now I'm going to introduce this person with an adjective that describes their personality with their name. Uh, so like, I'm like super Spencer, except I'm not that super, but we're going to go today with the ingenious Ian. How's it going, Ian? <laughs> That's solid. It's, <laughs> now, I've always been confused by the word ingenious. I have too. It's not I was, genius. I was just thinking. I think it means the it. same thing. Yeah. I was just thinking this. I was like, <laughs> if it's ingenious, is it not genius then? Because then otherwise it's just like, it's like the I word quite. I think it's quite. still the same meaning. Yeah. It's like the word quite. It's like you're saying like, it's quite exciting. <laughs> So like, how much more exciting is it? It's quite exciting. Like, a, it's like ingenious. It's like, it well, is when you ingenious. Say quite, it... <laughs> <laughs> but I think ingenious is an yeah, adjective. It, it works. Yeah, but it, ingenious is an adjective. But is genius just a noun or can it also be an adjective? I guess it's an adjective. Like, that is genius. That is a genius idea. I, I guess it's, it's also an adjective. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, so here on yeah. the Improv Summit Grammar Edition. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> Every other... <laughs> Every episode is now a new thing. Um, anyways, enough about me and my um, self-consciousness about all these little splotches of bright light from my window coming in. Uh, let's talk about you, Ian, and your improv experience. So I'm going to ask you, what is your relationship to improv? What is your improv experience? Whatever you want to share or shout from the rooftops, go for it. Yeah, um, I would say I've been doing uh, comedy in general for, I want to say it's in 2015, so about six years now. Uh, started a little bit in stand-up, but then found improv and my god <laughs> wonderful uh i think the first thing i did um second city did uh one of their like open houses um and i just wanted to be a writer and I, I, I don't know i just thought i was better at that never tried acting or anything mm -hmm. like that uh so all of my acting experience comes from improv too um took a free class I forgot who was even teaching it at the time. Um, and then just kept the classes because I loved it so much. Went through all of conservatory at Second City. Um, took some at UCB, IO West. Um, almost finished at IO before they close. <laughs> um, yeah, West Side, almost, almost everything in LA. Um, at least a little bit. So yeah, but, that's awesome. Yeah, not, not doing too much improv, too much these days, but with the stand up. So I use it as a tool. Yeah, I think um, it's interesting because a lot of improv has been on Zoom lately, um, and uh, Zoom is such a different yeah. improv experience. Like, it, it's interesting. People are like, what do you like better, Zoom or in person? I'm like, of course, in person. But there are so many things that I think are valuable with Zoom prov too, because you can play it a lot more. Like, it's like a, a sitcom. I'm in an improvised sitcom on camera. Like, I can play to the camera, but also working within yep. a specific frame is also something very specific that you don't necessarily get when you're on a whole stage. You get it when you're on camera. And so also knowing when laughter is happening or when it might not be happening if audiences are muted. So I think that there's value to both. Um, and it really kind of depends. Some people prefer <laughs> online. Anyway, just what I was saying, my point was, yeah, you've done a lot of different groups and styles of improv uh because there is such a vast amount that it's not like you're like ah oh, this one's cool okay now i know improv like it's it's i know that style of improv but now i want to dabble in something else and i want to kind of combine everything and make my own improv uh, as i do these little like yep hands um anyway uh, <laughs> shadow puppets <laughs> yeah shadow puppets. and this is what improv looks like if it was a shadow puppet uh, which you can't really see because of my background. Anyway, <laughs> so on a segue. Because of blends. <laughs> yeah, those are my segues. <clears throat> that was me coughing, but it's actually just me revving the engine of the segue, I guess, is what we'll say. Um, that being said. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> I don't even know anymore. I'm like, I'm like loopy, I guess. Powered by COVID. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly powered by you know depending on what vaccine you got if you got the j and j it only powers it for a certain amount but like it's still just as effective like you know 
Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I don't know the numbers. I'm not a I'm not a doctor. Nobody listen. You gotta to wait me. two weeks. And then... Nobody listen to me. Do whatever you want. Medical stuff. I I can't give you advice. Just the disclaimer. I can't give you. Advice. Everyone is listening to this because they. Here on the improv, so everyone is listening edition. to this because they think you're a doctor right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> doctor improv. That's what they call me. Um, no. Anyway. Um, so, Dr. Know-it-all, uh, yeah, yeah, doctor, doctor, yeah, doctor know it all when it comes to the COVID virus. Um, correct. That's probably not even what it's called. It's called coronavirus or COVID-19. Uh, see, wow. I know so much. Um, all right. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's throw it back to you, Ian. Uh, let's, t- let's talk about, uh, what you love about improv. That's, that's the question I have. What do you love about improv? Yeah. Um, I really like how it's basically getting to play pretend as an adult uh we did this every day as a child you know it's it's playing pretend it's playing make-believe you get to be different characters uh even if it's not 100 percent accurate that's kind of almost funnier if it's not accurate half uh-huh. the time uh it's it's getting to do it on stage and you share that experience and these sometimes real emotions real things that you could pull from your life or other people's life and experience and share that around, that's that's amazing. Um, and then, like I said, I use that tool of improv for other things, um, whether it's at work, um, working on projects and whatnot. Um, and even now, currently, I use it a lot in stand-up with like crowd work and things like that. Um, it's it, Even going on dates, <laughs> mm-hmm. it helps build conversation because you just yes and what they're saying uh hopefully uh, when you're on a date all the things you're saying are true but (laughs) yes and i did wrestle 12 alligators in florida on a tuesday night in june yes that is true (laughs) closer than you might think for some of them (laughs) complete lie that's not even true at all but yeah i mean i grew up in florida so i that's not actually that far-fetched for me to say i should have probably picked something (laughs) Like, yeah, I went to the beach all the time. Oh, no, that's also a Florida thing. I can't even think of, like, something that's not a Florida thing. Like, I lived a very (laughs) normal life for 25 years. That's probably closer to a lie. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, Yeah, cool. Um, Awesome. Yeah, I I love that. I I think one thing you talked about was, like, um, being able to kind of, like, play a bunch of different characters. And I think something that we always forget in improv is that there's no limits to like like there's no uh limits to like what people can be at all like um you know we have humans that of course people play and you know people people play all types of uh of genders um all types of uh like uh character uh, people other people i don't even know how to describe it but people uh we play a lot of different people but one thing that we also always forget is that we can play like non-human animals and we can play inanimate objects. We can literally play anything. And I think that that's what a lot of times as improvisers we forget is that we don't have to just play people. No, I, I, some of the best shows are when, at least personally, what I love, of course, everything's subjective. It's art. Um, But when people play like an emotion or, or a concept, I saw this one show, uh, second city, where someone played like the concept of depression and was just like trying to kill them all the time. It was super dark. Don't get me wrong, Mm -hmm. but it was really, really good. And it blew my mind sitting in on the audience, learning improv and not do that. You could just be concepts. That's, that's incredible. That's opens up so much. It's like the movie inception. You just dream a little bigger. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Inception doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, it looks really pretty. Um, that's all I can really say about that movie. Um, no offense, Christopher Nolan. I, yeah. I love The Dark Knight. Uh, super great movie. Um, I understand everything that's happening in that movie. So thank you uh, for... I also have just understood that like with movies. I, I, just, I just have to like watch things that like I don't have to think about, but I also love it when I have to think about things. But I can't think too much. Like I can't have... A, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of ambiguous endings except for like some movies. Like that's, that's how like my style is. It's like, I don't like that except for these certain movies where I do like it. Um, and that's, that's me. Anyway, <laughs> enough about me. Let's uh, segue on in there. Wait, where's, there's the other hand. I, it's backwards. Anyway, let's segue into the next thing. You kind of oh, actually. Wait, I'm, I'm literally in a... <laughs> All right, Paul Blart, slow down. 
I'm in a computer chair. I was trying to make it work, and it didn't work. <laughs> I'm on a blanket on the floor. It's really exciting. Um, <laughs> I'm actually in my Segway right now, if you didn't notice. Um, I take my Segway <laughs> everywhere I go. Um, no, anyway. Um, but you kind of touched on it, because I was going to ask you, like, if you have any scenes or any uh, moments that you remember uh, for improv. But you talked about the one with the depression, but are there any, like scenes that you remember specifically uh, other than the depression one or maybe that is like the one if you want to elaborate on that too that like where you were like oh i like this is great or like oh i understand this uh or whatever because i have those little aha moments where i'm like oh i don't have to just get improv i have to get like part of improv and now that i got that part i can look at the next part anyway whatever that makes sense to you in that question that i just blurted out yeah well, whatever you want to pull from that <laughs> uh, a few things come to mind uh um, specifically the moment where I just realized like what improv was. Uh, I was taking my first improv class with uh, Carla Kakowski, and mm. we were doing kind of this antiques roadshow type of game where you talk about an item and you make sure. up facts about it and you're trying to sell it essentially. Um, and then as we were playing the game, I'm like, wait, this this chair did not come from Switzerland. What are we Oh my God, it's professional lying. What? What? Oh, you just <laughs> say it's anything and just roll with it. That's, a, I had no idea. What? Um, <laughs> That's funny. And from that, I'm like, okay, it makes perfect sense. Of course, there's way more to that. You can pull from motion and things like that. Sure. But, but in that moment, it broke my mind that, oh, this is just what it was. Um, and then just watching some of my favorite improvisers, That's that's how I've, had my mind blown every time uh anyone from abd amanda blake davis uh craig kakowski just listing random things it's great with lists um jamie moyer with the energy you know it's it's watching mm -hmm. my inspirations and pulling little things that i like from everyone uh yeah that's awesome putting in my own work <laughs> yeah and like taking what you like and it's always the rule yeah. of like steal what you want don't use what you don't want great cool got it i will steal that thing but then also you have to be aware in improv, you can steal something, but it might not work the next time. <laughs> That's the beauty of improv. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah, trying to force something. 100%. And I, I like that you said that actually, because there's some people or some ideologies or some schools even that are like, this is the only way, this is funny. And that's <laughs> the only way you can be funny ever. It's, oh yeah. Okay, maybe to you and that's the way you teach. And I love that for you, but I think you can, it's good and it's healthy even to pull little things from everyone. Nobody's ever completely right. Even me giving this advice right now, that's not completely right. It's, <laughs> but it's right. Do what works best for you. Yeah. But it is right. It's <laughs> but it is right. Everything you do in improv is right, except for, you know, the things that are not right. But then in that case, they're not necessarily wrong. They're just like not as right as the other things, but everything you do is right. You just want to challenge yourself more. So that's, so that's why like in improv, there are no rules, but they're actually rules. Um, but then there, but then you can kind of throw the rules out the window when you know the structure, but then you kind of want to keep the structure in place, even if you're getting rid of the structure. So it can be confusing if you like really think about the mechanics of it all, but it's improv. Just have fun. That's like the number one rule is have fun. Uh, that's what I say to everyone yep. that I, know that I teach fun. improv to. I'm like, have fun. If you're not having fun, then don't do improv. No, just kidding. Thing um, out of it. But yeah. <laughs> um, no, but really, like, what? why do most people take the class, you know? So it's it's what you want to get out of it. Most people take it because they want to have fun or more communication. Cool. Go for that, you know? <laughs> Most yeah. of the time, we at least want it to be fun to some degree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, do you have any uh, plugs or any pitches or anything? That now's a good time to promote yourself on my show. Go for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, personally, like I said, uh, California, at least at the moment of this recording, <laughs> hopefully we don't regress. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. We're, we're due to open in like a week or two from this recording, which in the future. Um, so I think more clubs will be open up by then. Um, I have some stand up dates. Uh, you can find them at Ian Zandy on Instagram. So, yes, yeah. nice. great. At Ian Zandy. Make sure you uh, check it out on the socials. Uh, cool. <laughs> um, so, the last question I have for you, Ian, thank you so much for joining me again here uh, on the Improv Summit, is the reason that the Improv Summit exists. Now, uh, people may say, what is that? For those of you that are watching every episode, you already know the answer, but I'm still going to ask the question anyway. So a lot of people before pandemic, but even now are like, Spencer, you do a lot of improv. Where should I take improv? And it's such a hard question for me to answer because I feel like there's not like one, there's not one path. 
right? Like we're talking about how like improv is right, uh, no matter what you do. So I can't just say like, this is the answer. It's not, it's not multiple <laughs> choice C, like it could be A, B, C or D or E or an option that doesn't exist. So if someone came up to you and said, where should I take improv? What's one piece of advice or one tidbit you'd give to someone to help guide them on their improv journey? Uh, yeah, at least what I would say uh, personally, um, I, kind of circling back to what I said earlier, wh what what do you want to get out of it? Mm -hmm. um, if it's just you want to have some fun, cool. Take a, take a workshop, see how you like it and what you vibe with. Um, Listen to some podcasts about comedy. Improv Yak and circling back yet again to Carla Kukowski. I learned so much from that podcast. Even this show, I'm sure a ton of people could get things out of it. Um, oh, you're so, so kind. Yeah, soak up that energy. Soak up that information. Yeah, I was going to say, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for plugging my show on my show. I love it. Uh, it's really, really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Inception. <It's laughs> yeah. Oh, the, I don't even know if it's even close because Inception's got a whole bunch of other layers. Anyway, <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining me here on the Improv Summit. Um, before you go, I did say that was the last question I had for you. Um, and as always on this show, I am a giant freaking liar. Uh, and so I have one more question for you. And that question is: We've been talking a lot about improv. Do you want to do some improv? Yeah, I do. All right, let's do it. Uh, so the suggestion is, is whenever you are ready. This is the finest sandcastle I have ever seen in my 15 years of judging sandcastles. Thanks, I want to be the reigning sandcastle champ. Uh, uh, my name is Ricky, uh, and I've been building sandcastles now for, uh, since I've been born, which was um, eight years. Uh, I'm eight years old, uh, and so this is my best sandcastle, I think. It's um, uh, by Ricky. It's uh, Ricky's uh, Roundabout. It's just a roundabout. Uh, you know, like where cars drive sometimes? It's, it's Ricky's Roundabout. That's the sandcastle. It's a roundabout. So thank you for noticing my talent. It's a very... Yes, I can say that I've never seen a roundabout sandcastle before. I am a prior talent boy. Sounds like you want to give me first prize in a very roundabout way. You know, I am assembling a team. Like the Avengers? But I want to be more impressed. Is this really the best you've got? Avengers, yes, my dear boy, yes. But for sandcastles and architects alike. Wow, I want to be a sandcastle be builder. This, yes, boy. Yes, I want to be a sandcastle builder when I grow up. Not an architect, just I just want to build sandcastles. You just want to build sandcastles. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But I'm merely, like I stated, my earlier state, I am past with your roundabout sandcastle, but I see more potential. What else do you have? <laughs> well, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got a uh, a sandcastle that is shaped like uh, a whole parking garage, uh, and in in a neighborhood where the roundabout is. It's all just in the same like vicinity, like um like a third street uh, Beverly kind of situation, but no one can park there because only for the residents with permits only, but like as taxpayers, people want to be able to park in those spots, but they can't. So I just made a sandcastle out of that whole neighborhood. No, a neighborhood out of, no, a sand, a neighborhood out of the sandcastle. Mm -hmm. It's not a sandcastle. I out like of how you've infused. Oh, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm out talking of your words. My apologies, boy. Continue. No, that's okay. No, I was just saying, I meant, I mean, I made a sandcastle. I, I made a neighborhood out of the sandcastle, not a sandcastle out of the neighborhood, because then the neighborhood wouldn't exist. Whoop, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Little bit of building humor, I see. <laughs> oh, that tells my throat. It, it does. 
I love how you infuse city politics into your work. It's quite the trademark, I dare say. Well, thank you. I also made uh, now, Sandcastle both taxpayers. Both these things. Both of the things. They're taxpayers. What? They're Sandcastle taxpayers. They're taxpayers made out of sandcastle. Just show me these taxpayers. See, this is this is Bill. What? And this is Bob. And this is Frank. They're all wearing newsboy paper caps. Yeah, they're they taxpayers. Well, they're taxpayers, but they're also the news guys. They're the news, the news, the news bicycle people. They they deliver the news in the mornings, but they also pay taxes because they're also citizens. This makes sense because the working class should indeed pay taxes. That way they could fund and rebuild. That way we could build bigger and better sandcastle roundabouts. I like your municipal thinking, boy. I think so. But I dare say, what? if there was a sandcastle, what I am building, why I am assembling him, we want to build the future of sandcastles. What will society look in a hundred years? Show me that, boy. Oh, well, I don't really want to tear down my sandcastles because then I won't have them anymore. But it'll all go swoosh, kaboosh. So you're saying in order to move into the future, we must look on our past and work on our old mistakes like therapy. Yeah, did I win the contest or what? Yes, and I need to go see a therapist immediately. Okay, well, just make sure you give me my fries first. Yes. Here's your cash prize. Meet at the local 76 station Monday at noon. There'll be a bunch of other architect-looking people. You know them by their car shorts. Oh, Good yeah. day, boy. Okay, bye, Mr. Judge. Okay, see. You're still here. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> 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 I got real weird real quick. Uh, oh, that was goofy. Great, that was fun. Uh, that was a good. That was a good uh, scene out of the suggestion of is. All right, thanks very so much for coming to the improv summit. That's Ian. I'm Spencer. See you next time. Bye. Bye.